Bugaboo. You do? You do? It's totally custarded. Is the texture different? It is. That's so cool. We made custard. Do you That's know what this first? means? Sourdough donuts oh, man. with custard filling. That's for another day. Whoa, that's cool. That's really good. Is it good? You should try some. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Seriously, I don't think I'm the only person on the planet who had no idea that this is what custard was. <laughs> I don't think anyone really knows. Like we all know we like it, but no one really knows exactly I, what it's made of. I always thought like I'm totally stupid, but I swear I swear that they use like vanilla yogurt or not pu pudding. So anyway, I can see that. That's got Jello like consistency. Don't be hating. Wow, that's good, right? That is really good. That's totally custard. My life has just changed. For those of you that have been watching our channel for a while, we've been making our own ice cream for, oh, about three years now. But here's the thing, every year we strive to make it better and better and better, and we're having a few problems with the way we're currently making our ice cream. I know you guys would agree, there's no such thing as bad ice cream, right? The thing is, a recipe has room for improvement. We love it because we could just knock it out. We come home, we've got some milk to spare, we grab some cream, and we've got ice cream. We've never lost a pint. That's awesome. That's part of the reason that we started doing this because we had excess milk and we needed some way to preserve it, and ice cream was a great way. The thing is, we kinda want like more. Right? Isn't that natural? We just want more from everything. We know there's a better way or a different way to make ice cream that we haven't tried yet. And the reason we haven't tried it is one, we didn't have room to do it, but also it takes more time and more steps. What we're curious about is whether it produces a really good or better ice cream, or if it's just a lot more work for about the same product. When we first started doing this, we focused a lot on the recipe, and we got away from the icy ice cream that a lot of people make using milk. We started using whole milk, and then we started adding cream, and quickly we got a rip away from the iciness. The problem is, it doesn't seem like we can get completely rid of the iciness. There's still some element of that, even though we've got a recipe that's spoonable and that we really like. The other problem is it's melty. It's like it's, we can freeze it so far, but we can't seem to get it where it stays that way. When we put it in the jars, it seems like the jars, even if they're cold, we still kind of end with this melted portion on the bottom. Don't worry, we eat it. That's eh, just not very attractive. And finally, we're going for a better texture. You know that texture like at the ice cream shop when they take that scoop and it just like rolls into the scoop? That, that's what we're trying to go for. And we feel like if we can get the texture right, it's gonna open up all kinds of recipes that we really can't do with the kind of icy crystalline stuff that we're already doing. Cookie dough, Oreo. Cookie butter. Caramel swirl, fudge swirl, jam swirl. Brownie swirl. At first, we thought maybe our problem was due to our ice cream maker. If you remember, we had a hand crank machine because we were off grid and we didn't have an abundance of power. So we decided to compare a couple models of ice cream makers, a cheap one and an expensive one. And I would say the texture is better with the expensive one, but even with a $250 ice cream maker, 
still not nailing it. What we found with this White Mountain ice cream maker is that the, uh, the paddle that goes inside actually has somewhat of a whipping motion. And because it has counter rotating paddles in there, it has kind of a whipping effect or like a fluffiness effect on the ice cream. Of course, it does expand as it freezes, but there's something about the way they've designed this that it actually makes the ice cream texture even better. We were hoping all we had to do was just pay a bunch of money and our ice cream problems would be solved. If you haven't seen the video where we compare this to a $50 ice cream maker, give that a watch. It's actually really eye-opening. It completely surprised us in several ways. Now we're curious if we do an update to our recipe, what do we get? Whenever I'd turn to the trusty internet for some ice cream inspiration, all the recipes would start with heating. Why does everything have to start on the stove? We don't got time for that. And prior to living in this house and having spaced work in a stove, our options for preparation were very, very limited, nor were we able to really store anything of substance in the fridge, because our fridge was tiny. Your belief is that this is what we're missing, right? Is like the yeah. custardy base? Uh huh. So it's the same ingredients, I guess. Yeah, the, uh, the custard is surprising to me. There's an element of like very strategic heating that goes into the milk, and then it's like you get it close to curdling, but don't and then you mix it with this egg mixture and mm -hmm. you heat it again close to curdling and you don't. And I can definitely say that that mixture is not just eggs, sugar, right, milk. Right, which is like what we were doing. Right, it's so the same stuff. I'd, I'd say that's the thing we're testing today is, is making the custard first worth it. Is this what we've been missing all this time? Yeah, so this cooled overnight in the fridge um, and it did definitely kind of thicken up a little bit naturally. It was pretty it's warm. More, more like a liquidy pudding, sort of. Yeah, I would say it's more like a consistency of a pudding. So we're hoping that this will not only help thicken the ice cream, but it will change the texture completely. I made eye contact. He's coming. Hurry before he comes in. He's coming. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did you scare him? He didn't expect it. Bugaboo. <laughs> Bugaboo. We may have failed to mention that we're making mint chocolate chunk. Wait for it. All right, that's looking good. And we have 11 minutes to go on the ice cream. 12 minutes to go. For you guys that have been with us for quite a while, you remember that we started a home brewing project a few weeks back. And the nice thing about a project like this is that you can kind of let it just sit there for a while. You don't really have to touch it. But we're getting anxious to get this stuff moving because we'd like to start the next home brewing project. We're on about month two of this mead. This is honey wine that is made with fruit. This guy is raspberry, huckleberry, blueberry, and apricot. If you haven't seen the videos where we set this whole thing up, give those a watch. I think there was a couple of them. One where we started what's called the primary fermentation. Where this stuff has been sitting for quite a while is the secondary fermentation, and we're ready to move on to 
re-racking or putting this stuff in a fresh carboy. You can see that this stuff has kind of a sediment in the bottom of it. And that's partially the goal of this racking process is to help clarify this liquid. This stuff is looking super clear, but if you watch the video where we put this stuff in here, it was quite cloudy. And despite our best efforts to minimize the transfer of the sediment, you're gonna get some. And at this stage, it's okay. But where we're, where we're at now, we wanna get rid of this and try to move toward bottling, which is to preserve this portion of the mead. These airlocks that are on here have enabled the last kind of remaining fermentation to complete and it's been pretty quiet. You can see that this airlock here has water clear over here. Normally when this is under fermentation, the water will be pushed clear down to here by air that's trying to escape and it's working its way over. Given the fact that these two waters are kind of equalizing tells us that the fermentation's pretty much done here. This one is still kind of down here toward the bottom. This one's at the bottom and that one's close to the bottom. So there may still be just ever so small amount of pressure in those three carboys. And this one's definitely done. We shared a lot of really great tips on beginner uh, home brewing as far as wine goes in those first couple of videos. This step of the process, we don't really need to do necessarily. We could move straight to bottling. But the goal now is to try to get this stuff clean and clear into a new carboy, let any last little tiny teensy weensy bit of sediment get out of there. That way when we bottle it, we have a beautiful, colorful, clear liquid. Ooh, what kind is that? Uh Gosh, huckleberry? I think it's raspberry. A lesson we learned from the first year of brewing is that you don't, even if you want to end up with one gallon of final product, you have to over brew because this process of racking, you'll see that we're going to lose a bit of product because of the sediment in the bottom. If we could go right to the sediment, that'd be great, but we want to stay away from it so we don't get any of it in our final product. So this year we got smart and we overbrewed by one quart. So hopefully when this is all re-racked, we end up with one gallon of beautiful final product. Uh-oh, ice cream timer says. It says, sounds like ice cream's done. Oh, uh, let's go a little longer. I can hear it. It's still okay. going pretty good, but it's definitely working on it. So there are lots of ways out there to clarify a beverage. Racking is probably the simplest way, but it requires a lot of time because over time all these solids will just settle to the bottom. But if you handle this jar rough at all, you'll stir up the solids. And trust me, those things are like clay in the bottom. Once you mix them up, they just stay suspended forever. So it's really a simple goal to uh, siphon, using a siphon hose, out of this guy down to here. We'll need that again in just a second. Something we've learned is it's really difficult to do this process when you have a surface that's below you because it's very hard to see the sediment. And then uh, it's a struggle because we, we used to rack this like onto the floor or when we did it off the tailgate of our pickup, we did it onto the ground. It's just difficult. And we're not saying that we've got this process figured out, but we think that bringing this up onto the table and then bringing the, the jug that you're racking down up higher so you can see, I think this is all gonna work a little bit better. So I'm gonna start a siphon. This hose is actually just full of distilled water and then stop it. And then I'm gonna put it into this carboy, which I've already sanitized. If you don't know what sanitization is, watch the previous videos, it's pretty stinking important. And now the challenge is to keep this siphon hose below the top of the, the mead, but not down into the sediment. And it is harder than it looks. Down to the wire. Getting close. I'm trying to stay off the bottom. And you can see the silt at the top. We want to stay away from that too. We'll have to kind of pick a moment where it's not worth it anymore. You can kind of see that sediment in the top trying to suck its way in. We don't want to lose too much though. Put an air bubble in there so I think I'm done. What a big difference. So that's racked and it's also nice and clear. It could be more clear and there are things that we could do to make it even more clear, but for home brewing, that's plenty. But keeping all that sediment out of there during the primary fermentation process, way difficult. Can be done, but 
This process is pretty painless. It just is a little bit of extra work to make the beverage that much more appealing. Specimen two. Yeah, we kind of have a strategy with this. So this, again, was just to help us to make sure we can top off the gallon that we want to use for bottling. We were hoping it'd be too much. That's, that's a good problem to have instead of not enough. These little fermentation lids Alyssa found for fermenting vegetables, like sauerkraut. This is kind of interesting. Look at this kind of formation on the top. I don't think this has cost us the beverage, but there's kind of an interesting fungus going on there. I think we can rack around that and avoid it, so we'll try to just stay away from that. That I think I can get around. Nice, worked good. I think I got a couple grains in there, but it's not, not gonna ruin it. Time for this airlock to go back on this guy. We'll just leave this for a little while before we bottle it. We just wanna make sure that the fermentation process is pretty much done. We're gonna add something to, to positively stop the fermentation process, but we'll just leave it with an airlock. That way nothing can get in it before we're ready to bottle. We did get, looks to me like a full pint. I think we did a great job of getting all of that out of our final product. Mmm, smells delicious. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, so this is raspberry mead made from raspberries from a neighbor's garden and honey from a local apiary. Dry. Surprisingly smooth. Really? I would not say this is dry. It's weird, it doesn't like have that you know, like dry your mouth taste. I don't know if it's just a raspberry because I remember that when we racked it the first time, I tasted just a tiny bit, remember that? And it was pretty stinking good. I think raspberry might be our favorite. Nice. Of course, we got three to go, but I remember really liking that when we racked it the first time. And it's not dry. I wouldn't say it's overly sweet either. So that's basically re-racking. I think a lot of these home brewing terms are kind of intimidating if you've never done them before and that's understandable i do want to disclose that if you've never brewed before it's going to be a little rough going the first time don't give up once you kind of get a system and you find incremental ways to improve it this process is something you could just do in an evening or even in an hour if you had a super busy schedule and as you can see you can produce pretty large amounts of product or uh, beverage with pretty minimal work So that's the process. Now we just need to knock out huckleberry, blueberry, and apricot. is working out great. We ended up with, for sure, one gallon of each. And if we got any just little bits of sediment in this re-racking process, that will come out during bottling. We're gonna, again, lose just a tiny little bit for bottling, but we should end up with 
in the end the quantity that we wanted but we also got just a little bit extra for tasting which one's your favorite uh you know i want to go back i think raspberry may be my favorite but the apricot's got some zing to it and the blueberry i like i could see why maybe most people wouldn't like it and i feel like the huckleberry i don't know because i tasted a watered down version and so i was kind of prejudicial towards that so we should pour myself a little huckleberry so i can compare much better but it tastes just like the huckleberry from two years ago strange oh it's yeah like all right fruit. makes me feel better it means we did it right last time or we did it right this time i think we should share some of this with neighbors and friends who will appreciate such a fine homemade product i agree should we check on the ice cream yeah you didn't peek right no so you don't know what happened right nope okay all right, i'll go get it i'll be right back I don't know yet. I don't know. Ooh, that's oh, a good sign. that's looking. That's looking. That's looking pretty good. I'm having good feelings. Do you want to try some of the spoon? Maybe check the consistency. No, we need to mix the chocolate in. I forgot to put the chocolate in. Crap. Guys, look how stiff that is. It's not even moving. It's just wow. sitting there. Definitely improvement. <laughs> As that's soon as awesome. I touch it, it's trying to melt, but like, well, it's, wow. It's, it's in a 70 degree house. Yeah, we that's gotta crazy. Get it, we got to get this let's, stuff let's done pr soon. Go pronto. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that'll Should do. Should be done in about two minutes. This may end up end poorly. Let's just check to see if we're making progress here. I don't need to. Oh, I'd say we're making progress. That ought to do her. Wow. wow. When it moves around like that, that makes me feel good things. I don't think we're gonna get it truly hard in here. It's not the point. Yep. I think we gotta get it hard. Well, that in. looks that looks way better. That's not a milkshake. Oh yeah, it kind of looks like a milkshake. Yeah, this I don't, I don't. Well, you might be able to drink that with a straw. So we tried something a little different. We put our jars in the freezer. Do you want to pull them out probably one at a time? Yep, let's do one. Or two at a time. We've been freezing just, them in the past, but we've let's been just taking try them all one. Out. Yeah, let's do see what one. Happens. Take one out, put one in, take one out. I do see a problem. Getting that paddle out of there is going to be really tough. Um, We'll start with Well, it's not terrible. what we can get on the side. Wow, look yep. at that. Oh, yeah. When that hardens, I think it's going to harden perfectly. Yeah. The true test is the ice cream scoop test. I like the way that's going off the spoon. You're not pouring it off. It's more like nope. falling it's off. It's not like glop, 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 right. glop. Right. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. This is improvement. I don't even think we need to wait. I agree. Until it's frozen for a day or whatever. I agree. Hank, this is a winner. There's I love it. Lids. It's thick enough that there's an air gap at the bottom, and if I shake it, it doesn't yes. go down. Yes. Yes. That. So what it says in the instructions is you should pack it down. Really? Yeah. So push it down in the jar. I'm trying. We might need a smaller spoon. Are you having a hard time getting that off the spoon? Yeah. <laughs> Need another spoon to get it off the spoon. Yes. This is exciting. This is nice, awesome. Nice work, love. This and Huckleberry format. Whoa. Be good. Uh, Come on, stuff's summer. Stuff's sell for $12 a pint. Come on. Planning. I'm planting strawberries in the garden. Oh my gosh. Hopefully they'll fruit this year. Yeah. The strawberry ice cream. It'd probably be a small batch, mm -hmm. but that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. To make sure it gets a good seal on it. <laughs> <laughs> Once a canner, always a canner. Three down, 12 to go. One of the big struggles that we've had is putting this stuff into jars that were cold, but I'm not, I'm not sure if we just were taking too many jars out of the freezer at one time. And honestly, we really haven't had the big freezer for very long. So doing this on the tailgate of our truck, you don't really have a choice. This seems to be working a lot better. Another trick that uh, was shared in the recipe, ironically, was to put all of the components for the ice cream freezer 
in the freezer. Put the paddle, the bin, whatever, uh, put the lid and everything so they're not stealing from your ice. And we have found that you can actually make this huge ice cream uh, maker full of ice cream with one bag of ice. That's kind of crazy because we used to go through a ton of ice with the crank machine. This thing is crazy efficient. The cheaper one, uh, I think we did share that in the review, but in case we didn't, it actually takes about an hour to make really firm ice cream, and this one will do it in about 20 minutes. I think kind of nailing the ice cream further helps us on this goal that we have of just trying to keep our fridge and freezer stocked with good food. Yep. Especially as we head into the, the build season and yep. have a baby on the way, life's just gonna get a lot busier. So we're gonna continue trying to prepare food in batches like this instead of focusing so much on creating food just for one-time meals, I guess. Yeah, and I think we've probably shared it in every video prior to this, but in case we didn't, we don't eat all of this ice cream that we create. I think everyone's, it's flattering that they all think that we just sit here and eat ice cream breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but yeah. this stuff is actually currency for us. We have many wonderful neighbors and friends, and everybody in this community trades back and forth, and we receive many wonderful gifts from other people, and this is just something that we happen to be good at, and so it makes us really happy to give it away. Yet. Right. So we don't have any like elk smokies we can gift. It's not uncommon for people we share this with to give us meat in exchange, and that's a great thing. We don't do it for that reason. It just kind of works that way. They have extra meat, and we happen to be darn good at making ice cream, so. I think when you're in a community or neighborhood, or even have a group of friends, that everyone's passionate about food and making stuff, it's just one of the one of the best things to share is all the things that you've made. Yep, same thing with the garden. I mean, we get we do get a lot of food out of the garden and we don't eat every last thing that comes out of there. A lot of times we can trade or barter with other people who have worked on something else. We've gotten cheese from people which we haven't learned how to make yet. Yep. So it's wonderful to have a skill like this, be good at it, be the, be the person in your neighborhood who gets really good ice cream. Trust me, you'll have no shortage of other blessings in your life. Let's see if it'll come. Kind of break her loose. Oh, I think cleaning this paddle up is going to be really difficult. Holy cow, look at that. Wow. So cleaning the paddle with this type of ice cream is definitely a new challenge with the old kind of ice cream. It just cream, kind of sloughs off. Yeah, a couple of three good, really good shakes and it just yeah. falls off. But look at this body. What a problem. Guys, this- Well, this, and that's melty as heck. Yeah, this has been sitting in a hot bowl. and So this isn't just frozen. I think there's definitely there's definitely something scientific going on here. I think the lesson is we all need more custard in our life. I agree with that. Look at that, guys. Alyssa claims she cheated, but I didn't cheat, guys. I'm not a cheater. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. So good. That's it. All done. How many pints did we end up with? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. So it's definitely less ice cream. Well, I was worried. So what's weird about this is the other stuff would whip up. If you filled it to here with cream or whatever, mm -hmm. it would overflow. Remember, we had to take stuff out. I do remember that. Yeah, but this doesn't. I mean, this was clear down here, but it's like more dense. So I think we had four things we wanted to achieve with our ice cream. Icy. I erased our list. Texture. It didn't have great texture. It didn't have great texture. It was melty. It was melty. And because of that, we were very limited on our flavor options. Right. Because if you were to put like brownie chunks, it would sink. Right. It so wouldn't mix in. I think we've potentially we addressed all of those points. And yeah. our next ice cream, we'll have to start scheming the flavor. Yeah.